Council and the California State Legislature. And I'm very proud to say that I was the first Latina ever elected to at those roles. According to her daughter, pioneering political activist and Los Angeles representative Gloria Molina passed away on Sunday from incurable disease. They put her age at 74. She passed away at her home in Mitte, Washington, surrounded by our family, Valentina Martinez said in a statement released for Mother's Day. Gloria, the unwavering matriarch of our family, will be sorely missed. Martinez stated that Molina had been fighting cancer for three years. Molina was born and raised in the Pico Rivera neighborhood on the east side of Los Angeles County, and she took great pride in being a Chicana, a political term for persons of Mexican origin who experienced the benefits and drawbacks of existing at the crossroads of two nations and two cultures. She made history by becoming the first person of Chicana descent to serve in the California State Assembly, 1982, Los Angeles City Council, 1987, and Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, 1991. She was well noted for her role as vice chair of the Democratic National Committee during the presidency of Bill Clinton and up to 2004. As a result of this role, Molina was invited to speak at several different Democratic national conventions. On May 31, 1948, Molina was born in the state of Chihuahua to Mexican parents. She said that her Mexican grandfather was born in Los Angeles, until a high school bookkeeper called Charlene Levest started bugging her about enrolling in a brand new community college. The young woman from the San Gabriel Valley east of downtown Los Angeles thought that higher education was only for white people. She recalled, I used to hang out with all the Chicanos, and at that time, nobody was even considering higher education. In other words, she left. She resisted her mother's efforts to get her to join the workforce. Molina sought for other Latinas throughout her time at university, and she connected with them through the Chicana Service Action Center, a nonprofit community organization, and local leaders like Francisca Flores. She worked as the Hispanic deputy for Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign in California in 1975 after school. She started working in the White House's Office of Presidential Personnel not long after Carter took office. She ran for state legislature and said she had the backing of both women and her Latino community. She explained that developing one's leadership skills was a primary focus, not to join the Chicano movement and not to join the white women's movement. For ourselves and other women, though, we must take the initiative. That was crucial for us. Before taking one of the five powerful positions on the County Board of Supervisors, which each represent two million people, she volunteered for innumerable community and political groups, served on the Los Angeles City Council, and pondered running for mayor. Molina declared victory in a 1990 oral history interview for the California State Archives State Government Oral History Program. Every time I stepped up to one of these opportunities, the first thing that ran through me was fear, absolute fear, she said of her attempts at political office. And the intimidation came as a result of that fear. A lot of them are smarter than me. They're more knowledgeable than you are. I think one of our biggest challenges is to convince a lot of Latinos out there, who are citizens and non-citizens, that it is definitely a place and game that we need to be a part of, Molina said. I've realized, too, that it's possible to prevail over the local government. Grassi, Irma, Domingo, Bertha, Mario, Sergio, Danny, Olga, and Lisa Molina, Martinez, Molina's daughter, Ron Martinez, Molina's husband, Santiago, Molina's grandson, and Molina's other siblings. On June 3, there will be a memorial service at the LA Plaza de Cultura y Arts, a cultural center that Molina helped build while serving on the Board of Supervisors. Thanks for watching.